Yellowstone volcano shock. Sudden rise at Norris Geyser has been recorded by USGS scientists. Callum Hare of uh, Express UK reports today. Scientists at the US Geological Survey, USGS, tasked with monitoring the Yellowstone volcano revealed during a live stream how the Norris geyser was rising. And this was rising unlike the rest of the caldera. The Yellowstone vol supervolcano has erupted three times in history as we know, 2.1 million years ago, 1.2 million years ago, and 640,000 years ago, and a smaller eruption 70,000 years ago. Recently, uh, scientists have found that it has been erupting quite often, just about every 6,000 years. Now, experts have previously revealed that should an earthquake occur, it could take less than two weeks before a catastrophic reaction is triggered. And as a result, scientists from USGS are constantly monitoring the volcano. Of course, they're looking out for any changes. And they have monitors, they have seismographs, they come up with the weekly caldera chronicles having to do with their, what their findings are on Yellowstone. They even have the observatory, the Yellowstone Observatory there, and we know Yellowstone National Park was the first national park ever to have been established by the U.S. government. We also know from the past that it is two and a half times bigger than what it was originally thought. It reaches all the way down to Mexico, and also the new finding that it, it is a hot spot. In other words, there's a magma plume right under it. Now, in April of 2018, scientists in charge Mike Poland, along with deputy scientists in charge Wendy Steele, uh, hosted a live event on Facebook, and they took questions from the public. And during that uh, broadcast, they revealed how the Norris geyser of the Yellowstone National Park has continued to uh, deform rising over the past few years. Poland said, we're measuring how the ground forms in Yellowstone, and the best measure by far are the GPS stations. There are over a dozen scattered in various places, including in the caldera, outside the caldera, and outside the system. And Poland goes on to say, so I would like to show the plot and how to interpret it. The expert then displayed some data to the camera before explaining what it meant. And he said, here we have some data from a station near the Norris geyser. We have the east deformation, the north, and the up. The way you interpret this is the east plot. If you see it going up, that means the station is moving to the east. And if it goes negative, it means it's moving west. If the north plot goes down, that means the station is moving south. If it goes up, it is moving north. The plot is the vertical deformation. If it goes down and the station is subsiding, and up means it is uplifting. Poland then expla explained how the Norris geyser was acting differently to the rest of the caldera. He says right now it is in a period of uplift moving south and east. In terms of the overall caldera, it is subsiding, but Norris has these interesting events when it shoots upwards. It's the most dynamic place in the park, and perhaps it's because of all the water that's under the surface. So we are now monitoring it, and while the caldera is going down, Norris is rising. It was revealed in 2015 how there is now an increased risk of a supervolcanic eruption by the, uh, the super, this supervolcano erupting, Yellowstone that is, by the end of this century. Dr. Michu Kaku, renowned professor and phys of physics at the City College of New York, described the caldera as a sleeping Godzilla. This is what he told Fox News in January. He said, forget the image of Yogi Bear representing Yellowstone. We're talking about a sleeping Godzilla underneath Yellowstone. If it erupts in a maximum eruption of Category 8, it will literally tear the guts out of the United States. Instead of having 50 states, we would be left with 30. So this report looked at a Category 7, which is more likely once every thousand years, instead of once every million years. That means in every century, there is a 10% chance somewhere on the planet there could be a supervolcanic Category 7 eruption. Dr. Michio Kaku reminded viewers there would be plenty of time to evacuate. He said Category 7 will be many times the size of Mount St. Helens, enough to cause widespread destruction across the state, but not enough 
to destroy the whole of the United States. But still, it's something that we have to take very seriously now. Unlike a meteor from outer space, where you get no warning whatsoever, we get warnings. If you see movies like Pompeii, you know that there are days, in fact weeks, of eruptions building up, rumbling inside, underneath a pocket of lava, so there would be enough time, several weeks, to begin evacuations, if and when such an unlikely event were to take place." End quote. Yellowstone supervolcano eruption fears spike because geysers are becoming more active. Mac Slavo on the uh, Daily Coin reports. Now we've seen an uptick in the earthquake swarms in Yellowstone, also in California, also in the Long Valley Caldera. And uh, I'll leave a link below again for the Seismo Berkeley the activity of the earthquakes there, small and large, so that you can uh, ascertain the activity on your own. You can see that even Utah, southern southwest Utah, has been having earthquakes. Even north uh, of uh, Yellowstone in Montana has been having daily earthquakes along the fault lines. And uh, we have to keep in mind that USGS has recently said that the Yellowstone supervolcano is two and a half times bigger than what they thought it was originally, and that it sits on top of a uh, magma plume. So this is the latest. They fear because of the geyser activity becoming more active. Some of Yellowstone's geysers have been more active lately, reigniting fears that this massive supervolcano will erupt. Now, uh, it may not be a big eruption, it could be a small one. They've also recently found that the eruptions in Yellowstone have been about every 6,000 years. We're not talking about the massive ones, we're talking about ones that are still very dangerous for humanity, of course. Now, the sudden bursts of steaming hot water highlight the dramatic nature of Yellowstone, while reminding us all that we are at the caldera's mercy. We even have scientists like uh, Dr. Michio come out recently saying that we have to be very careful. He's warning us of uh, an imminent eruption there any day and uh, that uh, there's a, a Godzilla sleeping underneath Yellowstone like it's a sleeping giant. Now, while average people seem concerned, geologists seem excited and thrilled when Yellowstone's steamboat geyser began erupting in 2018. It has been erupting as often as once a week since last March, according to National Geographic, and scientists continue to say the volatile activity is not a sign of an imminent eruption. A Yellowstone Volcano Observatory reported that Steamboat has now set a record by erupting a whopping 32 times in 2018, a personal best for the geyser for a single calendar year. It's the world's tallest active geyser, and at the best of times, it can shoot hot water 300 feet into the air. But it's still just the steamboat geyser. It's not that that has been concerning people. The ear spring geyser, for example, has been almost uh, since 1957. It's erupted spectacularly a few months back and sprayed human garbage from the 1930s all over the National Park. Scientists insist this does not mean an eruption is pending. They say it's a good lesson in how geysers actually work. This is what Michael Poland, the scientist in charge at Yellowstone Volcano Observatory said. As soon as you start to recognize a pattern in the geyser's eruption, then it changes. And as far as geysers go, steamboat is sort of typical in terms of having these sporadic, unpredictable eruptions, Poland said. And he adds, but because it's this reality really tall gal, uh, geyser that has this name recognition, it makes it that much more interesting. But again, it's not just steamboat geyser that has people concerned. Back in 2007 to 2008, the giant geyser went bananas, Poland says. That's another geyser named Giant Geyser. It erupted many, many more times than it had in the past year, and steamboat did not do anything of the sort. 
Poland says that because there have been no underlying changes to the heat source, which people uh, uh, say it propels the geysers, not have there been any uh, geological changes, we should not be concerned about Yellowstone's erupting in a cataclysmic event. But Poland is either wrong on one front or he's being intentionally misleading, quote unquote. There has been a major geological change that could literally affect the entire globe, one which he conveniently left out for various unknown reasons. But have no fear, anyone who is worried about interruption has fears which are unfounded, according to the report by National Geographic. The scientists and media outlets who wish to control public thought and opinion would like for anyone concerned to take off their tinfoil hat. Sometimes it feels like we're being conditioned and told what to care about and which things we should fear, as opposed to allowing us the freedom to decide on our own. Is Yellowstone a threat? Maybe, maybe not. It's not our place to tell you what to think. We ask that you take your own thoughts into your hands and decide for yourself if Yellowstone is a viable threat. And this is now the latest concerning Yellowstone Volcano Observatory, the Caldera Chronicles that come out every week. This is the March 11 statement, Bridge Over Troubled Water, laying down infrastructure in Yellowstone's hydrothermal areas. We have here images of the Barrel Spring hydrothermal area in some restrictive topography. The road from Norris Geyser Basin to Madison Junction follows the Gibbon River through a tight valley with not much of a choice. The road threads, threads between the river and Barrel Spring over some very hot ground, and it takes a feat of engineering to keep the road drivable through this hot area. Sometimes nature has a final say, as in 1942 when the National Park Service, this image was taken, the road is now passable uh, by uh, car and bison. Now a section of the Porcelain Basin Loop boardwalk in the Norris Geyser Basin was removed because the ground below sections of the boardwalk became too hot and made charcoal of the wood footings that support the structure. So luckily enough in this case the boardwalk was shifted about three feet to avoid the new hot ground and uh, these photos were taken uh, last year 2018. So Yellowstone Caldera Chronicles, a weekly column written by the scientists. When it comes to building maintaining infrastructure, the dynamic character of the environment often requires creative thinking and adaptivity. The long-term monitoring equipment and elements park infrastructure is running battle and constantly changing hydrothermal system and geological landscape. But with enough data and foresight, Yellowstone's geology team and maintenance crews can make informed decisions as to where to lay the roads and ro boardwalks and other facilities to make these structures as lasting and useful and safe as possible for visitors. The roadways and boardwalks that lead to visitors to the, to the Old Faithful and Grand Prismatic Spring and other iconic hydrothermal features wind through breathtaking but very hazardous terrain. In many hydrothermal areas, visitors stand on boardwalks elevated only inches above and feet away from the boiling springs and erupting geysers. But the same hot ground surrounding a hot spring may be tens of degrees cooler just underneath the boardwalk. For example, temperatures exceeding 104 degrees Fahrenheit were measured at one inch depth in the ground just two feet south of the new feature on Geyser Hill near Old Faithful. Only a few feet under, underneath the boardwalk, temperatures dropped to about 37 degrees Fahrenheit. The placement of the boardwalk over colder ground is not coincidental. Yellowstone's geology team works closely to trail the boardwalk crews to map and need the heat and the proposed uh, trail and boardwalk construction areas. They use thermal infrared cameras, uh, essential for safety and planning as they're monitoring Yellowstone's hydrothermal system over time. They use the IR infrared remote sensored imagery to map potential paths for new roadways.
alert. Helium-4 gas has been found at the Yellowstone supervolcano. This is an explanation from U.S. Geological Survey. Royce Christen of Newspunch reports, is Yellowstone about to blow? From writer Lavender Rose via Before It's News, the clusters of earthquakes at the Yellowstone Park Caldera is not a good sign. Take very seriously these data points and ask yourself, would you be prepared if it blew? You can watch the charts daily, and this kind of violent movement says to me, the magma is moving. Just like the supervolcano in Japan went off, the Yellowstone volcano may be next. And we recently had the Krakatoa again erupting and may be going on as well. In addition, a new vent opened up recently that goes right into Mount St. Helens. Scientists believe that the helium is slipping out of the rocks that were formed during the Archaean Eon about two and a half billion years ago. But now they're coming out again from Yellowstone Park and it's not a good sign. Yellowstone releases gases ranging from carbon dioxide to methane. Not only was there a sudden rise in the elevation of the ground and development of new cracks, but a gas called helium-4, a very rare type of helium, has begun coming out of the surface. Bill Evans, a researcher with the USGS in Menlo Park, California, explained how the helium is released. Quote, volcanoes most always form on the edges of tectonic plates that make up the Earth's crust. Yellowstone sits directly over the middle of a plate. It's a part of the crust that formed a very long time ago, billions of years ago, and has basically been stable since that time. They've had this boring, peaceful existence, and now suddenly they're put on the front burner, he says. The animals and birds have been dying off, and now are we all in danger? This is the chemical helium-4 that was seen prior to many recent volcanoes erupting. So helium-4 emission means that an eruption is imminent. Going on with this, measurements from other GPS stations, GPS stations in northern Yellowstone show smaller displacements forming a circular pattern of deformation circular, as in the round mouth of a volcano, consistent with a minor pressurization that is building up underground, about 6 to 10 kilometers, that's 4 to 6 miles deep, near Norris Junction. The volcano island of El Hierro, the smallest of Spain's Canary Islands, rumbled and groaned over the course of seven months in 2011 and 2012, gases silently percolated up through the island's soil and groundwater. Eventually, a spectacular plume appeared off the southern coast of the island, a sign that El Hierro volcano, an underwater volcano just offshore, had finally erupted. Quote, we believe that helium can anticipate the detection of magnetic movement even before those movements can be detected by seismic activity, said Eleazar Padron, a geochemist at Spain's Technological Institute for Renewable Energies who led that work. Researchers have been using gas emissions to forecast volcanic eruptions for the last 30 years, but they usually focus on carbon dioxide, the second most abundant gas after water vapor in volcanic eruptions. Helium is a noble gas and it's a better candidate for tracking and forecasting eruptions because it does not react with rocks or groundwater and microorganisms don't consume or produce helium. Because of these properties, helium has been considered by geochemists as an almost ideal geochemical indicator that an eruption is near. Padron and his team found that measuring the flow of helium in El Hierro Island soil and water gave them clues as to when magma under the island was moving and how close it was to the surface, both important factors in forecasting a volcanic eruption. Researchers had been busy collecting and analyzing the helium gas content for more than 8,000 soil and water samples. Data can now be used to monitor volcanic and forecast future eruptions. And you can see the link here on Live Science telling you that.
If you'd like to join me on my Patreon account, you will hear content not covered by mainstream media. These riveting stories will be based on my research and I will state my opinions and give my personal insight on diverse and controversial subjects and world events, events not covered by mainstream media and not certainly on not supported by YouTube guidelines. So whatever I have on my Patreon, most of those will not be on my YouTube channel. Please consider becoming a member today. More of the, the most significant and important videos will be on my Patreon channel. Your support helps me to continue my research and keeps this YouTube channel alive. And we depend on your support, your generous charity, because we help economically challenged families here in Athens, Greece, and Kapota, and we also help the young generation with university tuition and the community around our church. Thank you.